back guys hope you're all doing well I'm gonna show you some of the things that I do with herbs I made a video on the fig leaf where I use it either in food I dry up the fig leaf here I'll show you here we go. these are all my fig leaves all dried up I've got them hanging the last video I made I did crumble some of it right into the polenta I didn't make a recipe for that one, but I will maybe in another video. But I do use the fig leaf crumbled up into the polenta, and then I drizzle fig leaf oil on top of the polenta. So, so delicious. And you could top it any way you want. Uh, you could top it with peppers and onions. You could top it with sausage, vegan sausage, of course, tofu crumble. That's up to you what you want to top on your polenta. The oil, yes, but not the... A crumble if I'm gonna do it with like a spaghetti sauce on top but if you're doing anything where you're topping it with vegetables or some vegan meats alternatives like tofu and seitan then I would use this right in the polenta and then oil drizzle on top really really delicious and this you could also use it as a tea so you would take one of these leaves I would not crumble it if I'm making a tea unless you had to have a little strainer. Let me get some water so I can make one because I don't mind having a cup today. There is so many benefits. There we go. I'm trying not to break it, but I would like to take a leaf out. Here we go. And I'll make a tea with that one. My daughter does is she crumbles this and she puts it right into a jar or she breaks it in big pieces and put it into a jar. That's really up to you. Put a little dry sack in it and this is going to stay for the longest time. Or you could just leave it hanging somewhere in your house or in your kitchen uh, depending if you're okay with having plants and herbs hanging. But we don't mind and we do it all the time. I have like right off my kitchen um, almost like a mudroom and I have like a trellis against one wall and I hang my herbs there okay and you can make of course also tincture with this and that's what we're gonna do today I'm gonna show you how easy maybe I'll wait till my water boils because it's getting a little noisy okay this is something else I do is I take a little hanger and I cut a little piece and then I make like a little end and I hang it right on my trellis. Or you could take a basket of course and just place the leaves in the basket and then let them dry. Make sure you put it somewhere where there's air circulation and that's going to work perfect. Okay. So in this case, oops little clumsy today in this case I'm gonna leave the whole leaf the way it is as I use water it's gonna just go into my cup and it's gonna make me a delicious delicious tea now when you use a plant just as a tea it still has loads of benefits not as strong as when we make a tincture which uh, which I'm gonna show you I gotta use my right hand cuz my left hand is still not as good as it used to be and you'll see how easy it is to do it this way because now you have this little stem as it wilts down look at that as it wilts down I have that little stem and when I'm ready I just pull out the leaf but I am gonna let it steep this water back here and that's how simple it is to make a delicious tea out of fig leaves so i'm just going to put this aside and let it do its thing and i'm going to talk you talk to you about tinctures okay for instance this is my rosemary tincture as rosemary and oregano because at one point i had um, a mixture of rosemary and oregano and i'll tell you why because they are both like an antibiotic it's a natural antibiotic Get a mixture of both and that's the label I have back in 2022 this bottle but now I have rosemary separate but the label still which I should update 
still says that there's a mixture, but in reality, all I have there is rosemary. We will write rosemary. And I will write antibiotic plus. Plus because it does more than just an antibiotic. So we will put a new label and that's what it is. Now these little bottles, I picked them up on Amazon. Okay, as you can tell, it's well used, but I'll show you how you could clean that also. Simply add a little bit of hot water. I know, I go from telling you about the plant to how to wash my, my dropper. Okay, and all I do is put one of these little brushes in there. It fit all the way down to the little tip, but you can leave it soaking. But just to show you, you can simply clean it or you could just leave it right into a little bit of hot water and it will clean off for you. Okay, and then you could just simply pop it back in. All right, we've got rosemary tincture. I'm going to show you how simple it is to make, but you want to say, well, why do you do a tincture with rosemary? Well, rosemary, number one, when I do um, feel under the weather. So, if you feel you're under the weather, I would say take about two to three shots like this. So, that would be between 30 to 45 drops at least a couple of times a day if you feel sick. Um, just by taking... 15 drops a day, it helps improve memory. So that's what rosemary does. It also treats people that are depressed or have anxieties. Uh, it helps if you've got headaches or a migraine, if you take more than 15 drops, of course, if it's a headache, and it depends how big your headache is. Is it a mild headache? If you see that it's still not relieving it with just one shot like this, which is 15 drops, I would say, Maybe double that or even triple that and see if it starts relieving your migraines. It, don't forget, this is a natural. There's no like crazy uh, chemicals or man-made chemicals that you're taking uh, to relieve your headache. So I find this more of a benefit than taking those pills that you take it for one thing and then it destroys something else in your body. This will not. So, but again, I'm not a doctor. This is how... I do it with my family and I would say talk to your doctor see if this will interfere no you're not allowed up here see if it will interfere if you're taking medication because some of these herbs might interfere once it becomes a tincture so your best bet is talk to the doctor and see what he says so like I said, disclaimer here, I'm not a doctor, but I've been doing this for, my God, over 10 years, if not like 15 years. I've been collecting herbs, uh, goldenrod, mullein. Uh, mullein is also a very great um, medicine. I'll show you. I have mullein here. And this is mullein oil. And it's good for years. If you have a earache, one to two drops. So that is the oil with the mullein. One day I can show you how I make that. But I have all kinds. I just made a new jar. Not done yet. I just made it today. Of cordyceps tincture. And this is what it looks like. Once it's made, I already took my shot today, so I'm not going to take another one. But as a preventative, I would say take, you don't have to take a whole 15. You could take two drops if you want. Also depends how strong your medicine. I, t I tend to make mine stronger. For instance, this is packed from bottom to top, packed with cordyceps. And then I add uh, the, uh, the alcohol to this. 
because it's so packed, it's going to make a stronger medicine. Say you have cordyceps up to here and you fill it up with alcohol, then you're going to have a more mild medicine. So you might want to take a little extra when you have it made as a tincture. But I like to make mine always nice and strong. So you could go from 2 drops to 15 drops to 30 drops, depending how you feel. Are you very sick? Or do you feel like you're catching something? Uh, or just to prevent, I would take so many drops a day and that just prevents you from not getting sick. Now, a cordyceps is an immune booster. It is said that it also helps destroy cancer cells. So something good to have as a preventative. So like you don't catch that cold or if you do, it's not as bad as if you would not have taken it. So like, again, <laughs> I'm not a doctor. This is what I've been doing. It's been working for my family. And that's how I'm going to tell you. This is sumac uh, syrup that I have here. Why I don't have it as a dropper is because we usually take about a tablespoon of this, gargle, and then swallow. We don't spit it out. It clears your sinus. Oh my God, I'm telling you, if you make a sumac uh, syrup, I'm gonna show you soon how to make one of these. I'm gonna, once in a while, make uh, different tinctures for you to see and tell you all about them. But this one here will clear up your sinus. If you've got like that sore throat where it's making mucus and you gargle with this, let me tell you, you are going to clean up. It pulls everything out really, really good. We have, just to show you all the stuff I have. I have, it used to be maple syrup. Now it's mullen and it's for the cough. This is also 1922, uh, sorry, 2022. And this is, if you have a cough, a tablespoon of this, it relieves your throat, really, it works. When I tell you it works, it works. But you have to know your plants, you have to know when to pick them, and I could teach you that if you're interested. You could put it in the comments, say, Connie, I really wanna learn about this stuff. Can you make more videos? I would love to share that information with you. And it's really simple, it's not as hard. You do have to know, it, will it work with alcohol or is it a fat soluble? So that is a whole different way of making a tincture. I do uh, reishi, I do so, lion's mane, and some I have to double extract, but I could teach you all of that if you want. Just say it in the comments, and if you're interested, I don't mind sharing that with you. I mean, you could go and buy this stuff it's expensive, I'm telling you, it is not cheap. If you ever go buy a tincture, some of them range from like $26, $29 USA, all the way up to $60, a little bottle like this. So that's up to you. If you wanna buy it and you have the money to do it, I say go out and buy it. Somebody else has made that tincture for you where you can make it yourself and I'll show you how easy it is to do. All right, so that's that. And here's my beautiful tea. Look at that. I could just keep it in there or I could pull out this leaf now, but my tea is beautiful. Let me get a plate, I'll show you. Just to show you how beautiful this tea is. The longer it sits, the more delicious it is. But there you go, look at that. You could put that into compost and you could put a little bit of maple if you want sweetness, up to you. A little bit of maple. And you get yourself a delicious tea to enjoy. Nature has given us these herbs for us to enjoy, either in food or to make medicine. This has been, it's not the first time somebody's made medicine. This goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. Do you know there's a place in Italy? I don't know how far back it goes, but there's a place in Italy where you go buy medicine the way they used to make it a long time ago, which was in a little glass bottle. And that's how people would take care of their health. There you go. If you're interested, I could keep showing you more medicine. For now, I'm going to show you rosemary and I'm going to tell you some of the things that rosemary is good for. So I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to sip on it. It has 
such a wonderful nutty flavor. Okay, let me put this away. I've got my cordyceps. I need to put that in a vial. I put that there today because I needed the bottle and that's all that was left in the bottle. Yes. Okay, so how do we make it left in this bottle? So I'm gonna show you. Uh, you could just put it in the way it is, but if you are using also the woody part, the woody part, I say pick it up so that the alcohol will go maybe scissors cut in cut and you know rosemary has a very strong smell here we go taking even the dry part everything goes in now I'm gonna continue cuz I have a beautiful plant that I'm gonna use for food and to make medicine and it lasts a long time really you make a little bit of medicine usually I make them in mason jars but if I show you I'm running out of mason jars because I have a closet full of mason jars full of all kinds of medicine okay now you don't have to cut it but I like to cut it because I want that woozy part also to be go get some more to be able to extract as much as I can bring my scissors with me okay there we go and you know if you're gonna try it with a small bottle you really don't need that much rosemary now you're probably wondering can you use dry rosemary yes you can but I say if you're gonna use it to make a tincture use fresh now if I find mushrooms they're gonna be fresh but if the winter comes around and I don't have any more I could simply buy cordyceps but they're gonna come to me dry so there you go I will use the dry but if you're gonna make it see what you can get fresh first and herbs you can you can buy fresh oregano at the grocery store today you could buy fresh rosemary at the grocery store today so you know and if you plant it in the summer start making your medicine there and this way you have it when you need it now, how long does it take for this medicine to be able to be used? Okay, I'll do it like this. Anyhow, I'm not going to fill it all up now, but what I do is I try to make this a strong medicine. So I would pack it. That means, look at that, when I push it down, I have still lots of room to add to this but what am I going to use I'm going to use vodka and I am going to put it right up to where my medicine reaches okay I put more but I will be adding more rosemary but my rosemary rests there where I'm going to fill it up all the way up to where my rosemary is so I'm going to add more rosemary to this and then see if I need more alcohol. But like I said, if you don't have that much and you want to just try it, you can make small batches like this and then you cover it and you put it aside. Uh, how long do I put it aside? I would say at least eight weeks before you get that strong medicine. Uh, if you take it before that, yes, there will be medicine that's extracted and that's what the alcohol does. The alcohol actually pulls the medicine out of the plant. They at least six to eight weeks, more eight than six. But there you go. How simple is that? Now I'm going to have a natural antibiotic that I could take if 
someone is not feeling good or if I'm not feeling good. Uh, it helps with chest infections. It helps, uh, again, depression, anxiety, uh, even as a tea, it helps if you're suffering from depression. And my heart goes out to anybody who goes through that because it is not an easy thing to go through. Uh, it's good for headaches. Again, if it's not a medicine, you can make it as a tea. It helps relieve headaches. But once you have it as a medicine, you know for sure it's going to help better than just having a tea. So uh, it also boosts your immune system. And once your immune system is healthy, you know that your body is going to be able to fight. Now, I'm going to say to you, okay, this is not going to take away uh, the... Like, you'll never catch a cold, or you're never going to get a flu, or you're never going to uh, get a chest infection. Uh, but what it does is by taking it a little bit every day, it boosts your immune system, and it helps you fight it faster. So instead of being sick for a week or two weeks, maybe you'll be sick for three days. And if I'm sick, I would do it morning, I would do it afternoon, and I would do it at night. At least three times a day the amount that you uh, take like the uh, 30 drops a day or 45 drops a day it helps by taking a daily it helps to be a preventative so it, be, it just boosts your immune system take your shot every day just take it I mix I do this I do my cordyceps because that's also good for your immune system um, for a lion's mane, if you can find lion's mane, that helps for memory. Uh, there's so many things you could do. I'll show you if you're interested. Like I said, just I don't want to like just bombard you with this information because you have to start knowing your plants. There's great books out there that you can get that will uh, tell you all about these herbs and these medicines. Um, but let me know. If you're interested, I could do, every so often, I could do a medicine and it could go into your list of things that you can try out. But for now, rosemary, it's getting cold out there. If you live in Canada, you could feel the chill already. We had a beautiful week that was nice and hot not long ago last week. It went up to like 30. Uh, but... The day after that week, it went down. I wanted to introduce you the, to the rosemary tincture. It's so simple to use. Uh, you could also mix it with oregano. You know, a lot of people have gone out and bought oregano oil. Well, this does the same thing as the oregano oil does. Except the oregano oil, you're just going to put a couple of drops in your mouth. And this one... Because it's a liquid form, you take a little more, but it does the same, same thing. It is good for your immune system, and it is good. It's also antimicrobial. I can't even say it. Antimicrobial. So, really good. Also, okay, uh, you cut yourself. All you have to do is take a couple of drops where you cut yourself, and you clean it with some cotton swab and there you go you've got something to disinfect all right so you can use it so many ways say thank you for listening to me because i know i could just go off my path <laughs> like i always do but i think it's important that you guys start making things that are a little more natural and uh, not depend well, I should say don't take your medicine because, like I said, talk to your doctor. I'm not a doctor. This is what I do for me and for my family, and I know it works for us. But um, better than taking those chemicals. I know my mom, when she was sick, uh, they would give her this pill, and it would fix this problem, but it would destroy this part of her body. And then they would give her this medicine for this and now this medicine for this and this and this would destroy this in her body and then she was taking medicine for this medicine for that 
and a new medicine for this. So that's what I have seen. This is something that I've noticed. I noticed that when people are on a lot of medication, they become um, diabetic. So now they're taking medication for diabetes. So I say try and take things that will help boost your immune system, like a mushroom tincture. And you can make it with lion's mane. You can make it with cordyceps. Uh, you can make a reishi mushroom. Yes, some of these mushrooms, when you buy them, they're a little costly. But you get so much of them that you can make medicine for a long, long time. It's costly in the beginning, but in the long run, you will save money, I think. That's what I believe. Anyhow, I'm going to say I love you. And I'm going to say... If you're interested, just jot a note in the comments and say, yeah, Connie, let me learn more about that. Show me what else you make and I could show you all kinds of healing medicines that you could use at home. There's so many things you could do. So I'm going to say, I love you. Go make yourself a fig leaf tea and of a rosemary tea and just enjoy herbs that has given us to use and to enjoy okay guys i love you and i'm going to see you in my next video